Welcome back to my video series on solving the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube with the three-block method. In the last episode, you learned how to solve the four-sixth cross step on the 3x3x3x3 hypercube. Ideally, you should have practiced this a couple times to get really familiar with how the pieces interact and move around the puzzle. In this video, we will be doing the second step of the method, the middle block. The middle block consists of four pairs, each of which has one 2C and one 3C piece. This is called an F2LA pair, and we will be inserting each of them into the 4 6 cross that we made in the last step. So let's get started here. After you finish cross, the, uh, the piece fillers that I have have green on the left and purple on the bottom is sort of how I remember it. So whether you set up keybinds or you're using the menu, just go to the next piece filter and you should see two uh, groups, well, I guess, I guess four new pieces. These are gonna be the two pairs that belong down here. So these are gonna be the purple F2LA pair. So like I said in the intro, an F2LA pair consists of a two colored piece and a three colored piece. So let's start with, with this guy. So we have a purple red two colored piece or ridge and we need to find the other piece. So it's not gonna be one with orange because we want one with red, so it's not this or this. So this must be the red, white, purple. So we'll spin that over here to get a better view of it. Now, there are many ways to pair in this step because, you know, the blue cell is completely unsolved and the green cell is also completely unsolved. So you can mess with them however you like. So for this particular case, you want to use a technique called capping. Now, no one really uses these F2L terminology terms in 3D just because everyone knows what it is, but in 4D, there's a bunch of different terms, so it's helpful to sort of understand the differences. So when you're thinking about the fundamentals of an F2L pair, you really have the head, or the, or the piece with more stickers on it, and the body, which has less stickers on it. Now, you need to pair up the head with the body. In this case, blue is completely unsolved, this ridge is trapped back here, and this edge is just over here with white on yellow. So they're opposite colors. So in this case, we can simply rotate this to be over here and that will pair up the pair. So for example, we could bring it like that and then just spin this twice. And that pairs up this pair. So now the white, purple, red pair is, is fully paired up and it needs to go down into this slot. So I'll show you the beginner way to insert pairs into the slots first and then I'll show you the, uh, the two move solution that you could actually do right here. Anyway though, the beginner way to insert a pair is to bring the thing fully onto the center like this and then line up the color that is not on the inside cell. So here it's purple. So we're gonna spin purple onto the purple cell and now we need to spin the white sticker of the head over the slot. So the slot's back here, so we'll spin yellow twice this way. And now it's directly over the slot. Now it's analogous to like an inverse sexy move or just like a normal 3D insert. So the cross edge is down here, so if you think about it sort of from this angle, it, it, it makes more sense. But basically, you know, you move the pair out of the way, you bring up the cross edge piece, and now it's back here. Then you spin the pair in, and then you put this whole thing back. Now, if I go back here, we will be able to see the Gigabrain solution here. And this Gigabrain solution here is really the beauty of the three block method, because it's so unrestricted in the first steps, you really can use your brain to reduce the move count so much. Anyway, it's a little difficult to see, but because none of the other red pairs are solved, you can just spin it this way and now it's paired up, but we need to move purple down to the purple, so we just spin the red side like that. That's the Gigabrain solution. But you don't have to worry about that if you're beginning. You can just put the pair on the center, line it up, and then insert it. So the next pair that we have here is purple-orange and white-purple-orange, and this might look a little tricky at first, but remember that nothing else is solved here, so we can really use as many tricks as we want to. So if we rotate from this angle, you can see it really looks like a 3D case here. So all you have to do here, because none of the pairs on orange or pink are already solved, is you can pretty much just do R prime U R2, and that would pair them up just like that. Now if we rotate back this way, we can again use the beginner way of inserting. So we'll just bring it onto the center, we'll line up this color, like this, and then the head's already facing towards the slot, so we just move the pair away, bring up the slot, put the pair in, and bring the slot back down. 
So now let's go to the next piece filter and we see the next two pairs. Now this pink and red pair over here can actually be paired up in two moves, but that is that is super big brain solution. So we'll go for this pair for now. So for the ridge, we have the orange sticker on the inside. And for the edge, we have white on the inside and orange on the side. So if you think about this in 3D, what do you do when you're, they're next to each other and white's facing up? Well, you separate them first, of course. But because blue is not solved, we have even more freedom. So we don't have to separate by pushing and then pulling. We can just separate with one move and we can just separate like this. And now they're the same color on the inside. Now you might see where this is going because if you focus on just the central layer here, this again looks like a 3D case. If you move it over here, you can see it's just a simple hide and reveal where we first hide the 3C away move the 2C this way, and then bring it back. And that is paired up. Now for inserting, again, we want the pink to match, so the color that's not on the inside to match. And now I need to spin the head towards the correct side. And then it's just the same insert. You bring the pair away, you bring the cross edge up, you bring it in, and you put it back down. Whoops, you put it back down. For the final pair here, we have white on the yellow cell, and we have pink red there and pink red there and we got lucky here this is again just one move to pair it up like that now of course you can bring it onto the cell this way and pair the way that I've taught you or if you're feeling smart today you can you can do this so realizing that pink is opposite of purple if we just move the red pair opposite of purple here then we can simply spin this onto that cell but now it's you see 180 degrees off so we need to rotate it this way twice and now that's paired in like that and then bring it back and this is what the completed step looks like this is the middle block so we've solved four of these pairs into the four sixth cross that we had before creating this sort of uh, sort of belt shape I guess and now we're gonna go through it again because hopefully we have some trickier cases that I can show you this time so here we have the ridge is already in its slot but flipped and then the corner is above it and they're connected wrong. So this is one of the worst case scenarios, which is pretty fun. Of course, you can just undo the insertion if you want to and take this slot out. So you could lift up the purple, bring it out, put the cross edge back, and now it's like that, but that's kind of bad. Another great way to do that is that capping technique I talked about earlier. Whenever a ridge is stuck in its slot, uh, you can put the corner over it if the white is facing up, which in this case means facing on the yellow cell. So if we just rotate the 3C like this, and we rotate the white onto the yellow, now it's pretty simple to see that in just a couple of moves, you can spin it over so that it pairs. And make sure that you're always inserting it the right way, because if you do it the wrong way, you can actually insert the pair in its slot except flipped. This is something that you can't do in three dimensions, so just be extra careful here, because now this pair is flipped, as you can see. And there you go, that's really all there is to solving the middle block. It's four pairs, the pairs aren't too complex. It's sort of the same in 3D, where you have a two-colored piece and a three-colored piece, except there's more ways that they can be moved around, so it's kind of fun, in my opinion, once you get used to it. So practice this step a couple times if you want to, or, or just do it once and continue to the next video. This step is really crucial to your understanding of the next two steps, so make sure you have this down before going on. But that's pretty much it for this video, so, so thanks for watching, uh, yes, goodbye.